Welcome. In this demonstration, we will show you how to configure the Chaos Hypervisor platform from scratch. At this point in the configuration, we have built a Chaos-enabled Linux kernel using the Chaos SDK and booted a piece of x86-64 hardware with it. If you're unfamiliar with how to build the Chaos-enabled Linux kernel, or you do not have a bootable Chaos-enabled Linux kernel, please visit www.carbonmountain.com select open source and then select developer kit and follow the various guides located on that page. To access the booted hypervisor platform we're going to use SSH. The default username for the CLI is AQCLI. It runs on port 1289 and for the purpose of this video we have the hypervisor running on 10.35.35.184 in our lab. You'll be presented with the usual SSH can't find a key. You'll be asked for the default password for chaos. It's chaos, bang, and then the release version. For, for this version, it's 0.6.0.0. At this point, you'll be presented with the AppQ CLI authentication system. Um, it's looking for the admin password, and the default admin password is admin. At this point, you'll be logged in to the system and you'll be presented with the default hypervisor menu. As you can see here, there's some default system information, including the type of processor, the number of cores, and whether or not hard, hard, hardware virtualization has been detected. If hardware virtualization hasn't been detected, you'll typically get logged out of the CLI at this point. If you have hardware that you know should have hardware virtualization support, you need to check your BIOS and make sure that it is enabled there. So the first step is to set up the local storage. So we're going to go to the sys menu, and then we're going to go to disk, and then we're going to run fdisk. This is just like your regular fdisk with any other Linux distribution. Uh, it's looking for the device. Our particular device is devsda. And we do p. We can see the various different partitions are enabled on the drive. So we're going to go ahead and delete one of these just to show you how to create one. We'll create new, it's going to be primary. It's going to use the rest of that partition. So you can see it just recreated it and then we'll write out the changes. So the default configuration for chaos is to have one boot partition, a swap partition, a data or content partition. Now this is not entirely necessary. Um, you can leave that out if you if you want to use iSCSI or something like that uh, for network storage instead. And then you have the AppQ partition, which is where we're going to store a lot of our VM images and so on later on. So once the storage has been set up, we we'll go back to the main menu and run setup. Now the first thing the setup asks you to do is if you want to recover an existing install. We're going to say no here because this is a brand new install. But if for some reason you lost your boot partition or you lost your network configuration and you had to recover the Chaos Hypervisor platform, you can do that by just booting any Chaos enabled Linux kernel that supports your hardware. Going into the setup like we've done here and then just say why to recover the setup and it will pull all your data back off the local drives without wiping them. So the next thing it's going to do here is going to tell us that it's going to destroy the local storage. So let's say why. Next thing it asks us for is the host name. We're going to call this HV09 and the domain name is carbonmountain.com. And now it's going to ask us for our local DNS server IPs. Here in the lab we just have one, so we're just going to use 10.35.35.1. Skip the other ones by pressing enter. Okay, now, now it's going to ask us for the hypervisor boot device. This is the actual boot partition. So here you just do SDA1. Um, SDA being the drive we just ran FDisk on and created the partitions, and then 1 being the first partition on that, on that drive that we wish to use. So this is going to become the boot device. It's asking us for the swap device, which is SDA2. It's asking us for the AppQ storage device, which is the largest partition on the drive, which is SDA4. And finally, it's asking us for the content drive, which is SDA3 for this setup. The next thing it wants to do is ask us about the network devices. So we're going to configure the primary network device. We can use the question mark key to see which devices the hypervisor has discovered. 
Um, here we're going to use ETH0, and it just supplies the MAC address next to it, just in case when the drivers are loaded into the system that it displays the, um, the interfaces in a reverse order than what you expect. So you can always compare by checking the MAC address. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to configure ETH0. We're going to use 10.35.35.8 and the um, subnet mask is in cedar format and it's uh, slash 24. Next it's going to ask us for the default gateway for that network which is 10.35.35.1 and it's going to ask us for the default VLAN ID. Our default VLAN ID for this lab network is 150. And that's going to ask us for the MTU. Um, here, if you've got a device that supports just regular frames as well as jumbo frames, you can put 9,000 in, for example, to support jumbo frames. But for this particular device, we're just going to leave it at 1,500. And finally, it asks us if we want to enable the link aggregation protocol. For this um, demonstration, we're not going to be using the LACP. It asks us if we wish to configure a network interface. We're going to say no. And it's going to ask us what the primary network interface is for this hypervisor. We're going to tell it it's ETH0. And finally, it's asking us if we're happy with the uh, setup. So we're going to say yes. And now it's going to go ahead and configure the hypervisor. Now, unfortunately, in this particular version, there's no um, status update. So the only way you can tell is either to look at the console or to look at the sys command in info. Uh, here you'll notice there's an app key partition and it hasn't been formatted yet, so its um, size and availability are zero. If you uh, keep running the sys command until this actually becomes a value um, similar to what you partition the drive device as, then you'll know that the, um, the setup is complete. Alternatively, you can look at the console uh, where it'll tell you the, the setup is complete. So at this point, we're going to wait and uh, proceed to the next video when it is done.